Hello everyone. Today we will continue our lessons on electronic components. In the previous lesson, we learned about the first component, the resistor. In today's lesson, we will explore the next component, the capacitor. So what is a capacitor? What is its structure, its working principle, and what role does it play in an electrical circuit? Now, let's begin our lesson. 1. Definition of a capacitor. A capacitor is a passive electronic component. It has the ability to store energy in the form of an electric field. Its structure consists of two conductive plates, usually made of metal, separated by a dielectric layer such as ceramic, mica, paper, plastic, or a metal oxide. 2. Working principle. When we apply a voltage across the two terminals of a capacitor, opposite charges accumulate on each plate. Like the dielectric layer in between blocks direct current, DC, from passing through, but allows alternating current, AC, or pulse signals to pass, depending on the frequency. The energy stored inside the capacitor will be released when the circuit requires it. Number 3. Key Characteristics of a Capacitor Capacitance C, measured in farads F, commonly expressed in MMF, NF, or PF. Rated voltage, the maximum voltage the capacitor can safely handle. Capacitance tolerance, the allowable deviation from the nominal value. 4. Common applications of capacitors, filtering noise and smoothing power supply voltage, coupling signals between circuit stages, creating delay circuits and oscillator circuits, temporarily storing energy, for example, in power factor correction or motor starting. Let's take a closer look at each part so we can understand it more clearly. Structure of a capacitor. In, in any electronic system or industrial electrical system, a capacitor always plays a very important role. And to clearly understand how a capacitor works, we first need to learn about its basic structure. A capacitor is made of two conductive plates placed parallel to each other. These plates are usually made from aluminum foil, copper, or conductive alloys that have high mechanical strength and good resistance to oxidation. Between the two plates, there is a dielectric layer. This is an insulating layer that blocks direct current but allows energy to be stored in the form of an electric field. The dielectric material. The dielectric material determines many important characteristics of a capacitor, including capacitance value depends on the dielectric constant of the material. Rated voltage, the maximum voltage the capacitor can handle before breaking down. Thermal stability, the ability to maintain its capacitance value when the temperature changes. Um, common types of dielectric materials, paper impregnated with oil or chemicals produces paper capacitors often used in power filter circuits or power factor correction. Ceramic, produces ceramic capacitors, small in size, available in many capacitance values suitable for high-frequency circuits and noise filtering. Mica, used in applications that require high capacitance stability and low loss. Electrolytic dielectric combined with aluminum or tantalum plates produces electrolytic capacitors, which have large capacitance values suitable for DC power supply circuits. The, the type of dielectric material is also the basis for naming and classifying capacitors. That is why we have familiar names such as paper capacitors, ceramic capacitors, mica capacitors, and electrolytic capacitors. Each type has its own advantages and disadvantages and is used appropriately depending on the requirements of the circuit. Common types of capacitors. In reality, a capacitor does not have just one single shape. Depending on the manufacturing technology, the type of dielectric material, and the intended application, the appearance of a capacitor can vary a lot. In practice, we often come across 1. Cylindrical capacitors, usually aluminum electrolytic capacitors or tantalum capacitors, shaped like a round cylinder with two leaded pins or an SMD form, commonly found in power supply circuits because they offer large capacitance values. 2. Box capacitors, encased in rectangular or square plastic housing, often paper capacitors, film capacitors, or mica capacitors, commonly used in filter circuits and high frequency circuits. 3. Disc capacitors, flat and round like a coin. Through-hole leads, inexpensive and often used for noise filtering and signal coupling. 4. SMD capacitors, 
extremely small in size, commonly found in modern electronic devices. These capacitors do not have their values printed on the body. You must refer to the circuit diagram or measure directly to identify them. This variety of shapes is not only for easier installation on different PCBs, but it also relates to uh, voltage handling and leakage current, heat dissipation efficiency, operating frequency characteristics. Therefore, when repairing or designing a circuit, being able to correctly identify the shape and type of capacitor will help you replace components accurately and ensure the circuit operates reliably and lasts longer. Capacitance, unit and symbol of a capacitor. What is capacitance? Capacitance, symbol C, is a quantity that describes the ability of a capacitor to store electric charge on its two plates when a voltage difference is applied across them. Simply put, the larger the capacitance, the more charge the capacitor can store at the same voltage level. Have factors affecting capacitance. The capacitance value of a capacitor is determined by the formula C equals kex S, sur D where C, capacitance of the capacitor, measured in farads, F. In practice, we often use smaller units such as microfarad, nanofarad, NF, or picofarad, PF. X, epsilon, the dielectric constant of the insulating layer depending on the dielectric material, such as paper, ceramic, mica, plastic, or metal oxide. S, surface area of one plate, and squared arcade. The larger the plate area, the higher the capacitance. D, distance between the two plates. The smaller the distance, the higher the capacitance. Meaning of the formula, increase plate area S, capacitance increases. Reduce the distance between plates D, capacitance increases. Use a dielectric material with a higher dielectric constant, KEX, capacitance increases. Capacitor symbols in circuit diagrams. Non-polarized capacitor, shown as two parallel lines of equal length. Polarized capacitor, shown as one straight line and one curved line, or with a plus sign at the positive terminal. In circuit diagrams, capacitors are usually labeled as C1, C2, C3, and so on. As for the units of capacitance, we have the following conversion formula. 1 farad equals 1,000 microfarads equals 1 million nanofarads equals 1 billion picofarads. 1 microfarad equals 1,000 nanofarads. 1 nanofarad equals 1,000 picofarads. Now let's take a closer look at a very important property of a capacitor. That is, its ability to charge and discharge. Thanks to this property, a capacitor can conduct alternating current. Charging process. As we can see in the illustration, when switch K1 is closed, electric current from the power source U flows through the light bulb and charges the capacitor. This current is called the charging current. While charging, the bulb lights up briefly. When the capacitor is fully charged, the charging current gradually drops to zero, and the light bulb turns off. Discharging process. When the capacitor is fully charged, if switch K1 is opened and switch K2 is closed, the current from the positive plus plate of the capacitor flows through the light bulb and returns to the negative minus plate. The bulb lights up briefly again. When the capacitor has fully discharged, the bulb turns off. Conclusion. The larger the capacitance of the capacitor, the longer the bulb will stay lit. In other words, the charging and discharging time will be longer. How to read the capacitance value on a capacitor. Let's take a closer look at how to read the value of a capacitor. For electrolytic capacitors, electrolytic capacitors are polarized. They have a negative, minus, and a positive plus lead. They are always cylindrical in shape. The capacitance value of an electrolytic capacitor is usually printed directly on its body. For example, in the image we see an electrolytic capacitor with a capacitance of 185 millifarads and a voltage rating of 320 volts. Another example is a surface mount electrolytic capacitor with a value of 220 millifarads rated at 50 volts. For film capacitors, ceramic capacitors, and small SMD capacitors, the capacitance value is written as a code, usually three digits or sometimes four digits, similar to how resistor values are coded. For a three-digit code, the first two digits are the base value, and the third digit tells you how many zeros to add. 
For example, 104, 10, and four zeros, 100,000 picofarads, which is 100 nanofarads, or 0.1 microfarads. Another example, 223, 22, and three zeros, 22,000 picofarads, which is 22 nanofarads. For a four-digit code, the reading method is the same, but it gives a more precise value, especially for larger capacitances. For SMD capacitors that do not have their values printed, this type is very common in small electronic devices and in modern ECUs. In this case, we have no accurate way to determine the exact value except by referring to the schematic diagram of that specific device. Or we remove the capacitor from the circuit, then use a measuring meter to compare it with a similar component from the same model. The meaning of the voltage value printed on a capacitor. We can see that on any capacitor, the voltage rating is always printed right after the capacitance value. This is the maximum voltage that the capacitor can withstand. If this voltage is exceeded, the capacitor may explode. When installing a capacitor into a circuit with a voltage U, it is always recommended to use a capacitor with a maximum voltage rating about 1.4 times higher. For example, in a 12 volt circuit, we should use a capacitor rated at 16 volts. In a 24 volt circuit, we should use a capacitor rated at 35 volts, and so on. There are many types of capacitors, such as paper capacitors, ceramic capacitors, mica capacitors and electrolytic capacitors. But in terms of characteristics, we divide capacitors into two main categories, non-polarized capacitors and polarized capacitors. How to test a capacitor. Nowadays, with modern technology, many digital multimeters come equipped with a capacitance measuring function. This is very convenient for us. You simply switch the meter to the capacitance range and measure directly across the two leads of the capacitor. In addition, you can also set the meter to the continuity range, also known as the ohm setting, to check whether the capacitor is leaking or short-circuited. Let's learn about series and parallel capacitor connections. First, capacitors in series. When capacitors are connected in series, the equivalent capacitance, C total, is calculated using this formula. 1 divided by C total equals 1 divided by C 1 plus 1 divided by C 2 plus 1 divided by C 3. If there are only two capacitors in series, then the formula becomes C total equals C 1 times C 2 divided by C 1 plus C 2. When connected in series, the voltage rating of the equivalent capacitor is equal to the sum of the voltage ratings of all the capacitors. That is, U total equals U1 plus U2 plus U3. When connecting electrolytic capacitors in series, always pay attention to polarity. The negative terminal of the first capacitor must be connected to the positive terminal of the next capacitor. Capacitors in parallel. When capacitors are connected in parallel, the total capacitance is equal to the sum of the capacitances of all the capacitors. Total equals C1 plus C2 plus C3. The voltage rating of the parallel group is determined by the capacitor with the lowest voltage rating. If the capacitors are electrolytic capacitors, they must all be connected with the same polarity, positive to positive and negative to negative. Applications of capacitors. Capacitors are used very widely in electrical and electronic engineering. In electronic devices, a capacitor is an essential component. In every circuit, a capacitor has a specific purpose, such as signal transmission, noise filtering, power supply filtering, or generating oscillations, and so on. Here are some illustrated examples of capacitor applications. In a power supply filter circuit, as shown in the picture above, an electrolytic capacitor is used to smooth the direct current DC voltage after rectification, so it can provide a stable voltage to the load. If there is no capacitor, the DC voltage after the diodes will be rippling, not smooth. When we add the capacitor, this voltage is filtered and becomes relatively smooth. The larger the capacitor, the smoother the DC voltage will be. Capacitors are also used in oscillator circuits. For example, in the picture above, we have an A-stable multivibrator circuit that generates square wave pulses. 
Capacitors can also be used for signal coupling or for suppressing high-frequency pulses. So we have now completed our lesson on capacitors, small components, but with a very important role in electronics. If you found this video helpful, please remember to like, subscribe, and turn on the notification bell so you won't miss the next lessons. Knowledge is the foundation that helps you improve your skills. Learning a little every day will take you a long way in your technical journey. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next lesson.